Don't you touch that deck. It's the Trilla in Manila, baby. We bring in boxing back. Welcome to Fight Club. June 19th, live on pay-per-view at TrailerFightClub.com. Fight TV or text FIGHT to 75303 for a chance to win a golden ticket VIP experience. Experience. Also, I guess it's safe for us to talk about where the fight is going to be broadcast over. To get VIP experience. Let me, there we go. Where the fight is going to be broadcast over in Australia. So, Big J, can you take that away? Um, first of all, let me introduce ourselves. It's Teach Tree Controversy and Big J with FightView360.com. We cover every single major fight live. And now that we're back full time, we're really back into the swing of things. So, this weekend, June the 19th, Tiafimo Lopez, let's go ahead and say it, unified, but, you know, for them, for semantics, undisputed 135-pound champion is going to be taking on his IBF mandatory challenger in George Cambosos. So can you jump right into Big J and just tell the particulars of where the fight is going to be broadcast over there in um, Australia? Yep, so it's going to be broadcast on uh, Foxtel Main Event TV, Channel 521, with a uh, kickoff time of uh, 11 a.m. Australian East Standard Time. Uh, probably be 10.30 Central, South Australia, the NT, and uh, 9 a.m. over in Western Australia. And um, over here, it's going to be forty nine ninety nine on Fight.TV pay-per-view. I just did a quick search on my Varian Fios um, um, on demand, and I can't find to see if it's going to be available like the previous Tyson versus Jones, um, Jake Paul versus Ben Askren, where you can also purchase it through your satellite dish or cable provider. So I'm going to have some more details on that by the end of the week. But as it stands right now, you can purchase it on uh, fight.tv. I have it pulled up here on the screen. I'm going to put the link down below in the description box. And it's $49.99. Over in Australia, it's $29.95. Now, can you talk to us about the significance of that before we pull up this... Um, clip of uh freddie roach about george cambos in australia and i have the main event page on here and to give a little bit of a plug to the other fight that we've been covering you know uh basically can you talk about the uh main event boxing schedule pretty much paul gallon versus justice hooney and versus this fight right so paul paul gallon versus justice hooney is on uh tomorrow night probably the main event will be about now it's currently what is it? 10:26 uh, p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, Tuesday, June 15th. I dare say the main event will probably be on within 24 hours. Paul Gallon versus Justice Hooney for the Australian Heavyweight Title. That is happening in the uh, Sydney. It is in Sydney. I think it's at the ICC Exhibition Centre. That's actually 60, uh, 59.95. George Cambosis versus Tiafimo Lopez is only 29.95. Yet. George's fight is far more significant on any scale than what Justice Hooney versus Paul Gallen is, because in, retro in reality, it's just a retired body player fighting a Olympic hopeful. So, yeah, that, uh, but um, now, to be fair, Paul Gallen is the biggest draw in Australian boxing. Now, that's that's a, that's a sort of like an oxymoron. The fact that a ex football player is the biggest draw in bo Australian boxing. So no other boxer even comes close to what Paul Gallen can, how many bums and seats Paul Gallen can put on. So, yeah, well, it's actually a good thing because you can get a really good, really good uh, quality fight in George Cambosis just for only 30 bucks. So you can yeah. look at the positives. Yeah, also, uh, um, if, if you really want to know more details of the fight that we're referring to, uh, the video before this is an interview from one of the undercard fighters, Isaac Hardman, a um what is he he's a middleweight right that's he's at 160 but you know he dances around between 168 right big j 
No, 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 no. He's he's focused on one sixty. Okay. Um, he's the Australian. He's the current Australian middleweight champion, and I believe that he will be staying at one sixty for the um the time being. So okay. I, don't, and, I don't think he. Uh, yeah. Okay, and also be the video before that is the press conference, the final fight week press conference of the event, Paul Gallon versus Justice Hooney that we're talking about. It's for the American fans. You know, you're probably wondering, like, why are we talking about this? Because the significance of it is, this is a very, very big fight over in the Oceanic Territory, you know, between New Zealand and Australia with Paul Gallon versus Justice Hooney compared to the publicity or media coverage that Tiafima Lopez versus George Camboso Jr. should be getting over there. So this is a time, um, good time to pull up this clip here from an interview from Freddie Roach that was conducted by um, Eli Sackback of ES News that was put together in a montage or build-up content video from uh, Motivedia Boxing, a very well-known YouTube uh, promotion highlights channel, if that's the best way to put it. So we're going to start right here. Please subscribe. Make sure you take your time out and like the video. This is Teach Your Controversy and Big Game with FightView360.com. Manny Pacquiao. Unbelievable experience, and, and it definitely has hardened me up to become the fighter that, that I'm moving towards. He's a great kid. Uh, they say he's really not that well liked in this country. He believes in himself, and like he's very cocky and stuff like this. But you know what? If you don't believe in yourself, who the fuck is going to believe in you? Yeah. I, I, I told him, don't change. How far do you think you can go? All the way. And we may have some uh, disagreements there, but uh, what are your thoughts on um, uh, Freddie Roach's comments? And how is George Cambosos perceived over there? And as it stands right now during, you know, fight week, we are right now Tuesday, June the 15th, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The final press conference is this Thursday, weigh-in is on Friday, and then the fight is this weekend. Now, I guess what I'm asking is, not to be too long-winded, is what's the buzz like over there? And you've been um, voicing your frustrations about how, you know, the lack of promotion and coverage for this fight over there for uh, George Cambosos. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I said in a previous video that we did, if this was Tim Zhu getting his shot against the 150, uh, yeah, an undisputed fight at 154, it would be everywhere. There would be documentaries, there would be specials, there would be his fights played on like a continuous loop for three days. It would be insane. But because George is, A, not well known in Australia, and B, has said some pretty... George is known for having a bit of a lip on him. And he does say things that that I've seen reports that intentionally does piss people off. Like uh, Jeff Horn put a post, uh, former WBA welterweight champion, put a post on Facebook today saying that even though he didn't agree with some of the things... George said about him, which I don't know what they were. I saw um, that. He's still throwing, yeah, he's, he's still throwing his full support behind George Kimbasis Jr. And so they fucking should. I mean, this kid is getting the biggest opportunity Australians ever got for the last twenty years. Yeah. I mean, let me see. Over the last twenty years, let me see. Um, and I, uh, Jason Malone versus an AA was a very, very significant fight at Bantamweight. Alex Leopold versus Klitschko uh, was the most significant fight for an Australian heavyweight. And Glenn Kelly versus Roy Jones Jr. for the undisputed at the time light heavyweight titles back in 2002. The only person that's come even, you know, this is a massive opportunity for a lightweight. I mean, the last lightweight contender, world contender we had was Michael Katsidius, um, who unfortunately also, uh, who went down, uh, who mm -hmm. lost to, um, what's that bloke's name? Uh, one, one more kiss. That's the one. Yep. That's the one about 10 years ago. I think it was 2010. Uh, this is a massive, massive, massive fight. And all we hear about is bloody Paul Gallon versus Justice Hurdy. So, which really is, let's be honest, it's just a fucking novelty fight. Yeah, so let, well, uh, let's go ahead and dive right into uh, George Kimbos. We have his box rec pulled up. 19-0 with um, 10 KOs. His last fight was um, against uh, Lee Selby to become, which he won by split decision, to become the mandatory IBF for Tiafimo Lopez. Now, as it stands right now, many are not giving George Cambosos much of a shot. You know, me looking at it, I'm trying to find a way he can win. 
you know, I'm looking at right. That, here's my concern. And I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm concerned that Tiafimo Lopez will lose this fight by him, you know, the way all of the um, outside of the ring issues. If you don't know, he has re-upped his and amended, re-upped and amended his contract with Top Rank Boxing. So Top Rank, you know, and ESPN knew what they had. They didn't want to lose it. And they said, all right, we need to keep this guy on our platform. And they gave him what he wanted. So basically, up until um, this last Saturday on the Shakur Stevenson versus uh, Jeremiah Nakatan Nakathila card, Top Rank and ESPN announced that Tiafimo Lopez, uh, I mean Tiafimo Lopez's contract issue was resolved. So after well, that, that fight, would be a huge weight off his shoulders. That yeah. would work in Tiafimo's favor. Yeah, but still, nonetheless, you know, we, we've seen in, in in the past that fighters outside of the ring can have issues that can affect them inside of the ring. So yeah, it can be a huge weight off his shoulders, but at the same time, you know, how's things been going over the last, you know, several, several months, months up until yeah. this point. Also, yeah, now, that, I'm, that's now I'm not one to get into, you know, talking about what has happened in sparring. I don't like doing it, but they're also, and, and we, we, we've heard about this many times where guys like, just to go back to it, guys like, um, used to hear Jose Benavidez, you know, years and years ago, used to touch Manny Pacquiao up in sparring. I forgot who's the guy that would come to Floyd Mayweather sparring that you would hear would touch Floyd Mayweather up. Sparring is sparring, you know, but with everything's been going on, you know, and then with the bright lights, I do have some concerns about Tia Fimo because some have been saying that maybe he's been getting a little bit too big for his britches. Yeah, he's been arguably one of the best, if not best amateur boxer on paper of all time, and he outboxed him. Still, it wasn't like a full dominating when he was injured. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm being devil's advocate here. And, you know, my job is, what's what's the point and the fun in covering the fight if we're not going to try to find a way for George Kimbosos to win? Now, am I saying he's going to win? Mm, I'm trying to look at the skill set. I'm thinking like, all right, he is the smaller fighter. He's showing up the press conferences wearing lifts for crying out loud. Weight wise, he's going to be smaller. And and what, what we've seen from him with with punching power and ability in his last you know two significant fights against um, Mickey Bay and Lee Selby, it's kind of hard to say. Both were split decisions, by the way. But even though I feel he clearly, I mean, he won both. But it's kind of hard to say, like, ah, he's going to give Tiafimo problems. So I'm going to turn it over to you and get your thoughts, you know, on where, you know, how can George Cambosos win this fight and how can Tiafimo Lopez lose this fight? Same way Pacquiao got beat by Horn. Jeff, George has to rush him from the opening bell and Tiafimo just has to look at him like he's just going to run a train through him and not take him seriously. That is how George is going to win. That's probably, let's be honest here, that's probably the only way George is going to win. As as much as it hurts me to say, uh, I want George to get in there, crack his teeth out and knock that yank out, you know, to use an Aussie slang. Uh, But, you know, um, in reality, it's going to be an extremely tall order for George. George, If he does it, it'll be the upset of the year without, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, if, if he does it, but can he do it? Uh, I just, I just, I mean, I, I know that I when you know, I keep on going back to Nayo Maloney when I thought, you know, that he had, you know, an advantage and all this and bring rust, but TFM doesn't have any of that. He's got no injuries, he's got no problems, and he just dominated or completely outclassed and beat up the best, you know, amateur ever. Yeah, you know, one of the you know, the one of the top pound for pound. I mean, what was um Lomachenko pound for pound number three or no? Four in the world? No, at that point in time, he was hit between him and Terence Crawford. They were on, you know, they were number one. You know, on a lot on a lot of uh, lists on a lot of. Oh shit, Canelo would have to be number one. Yeah, but but that, but yeah, I agree. But at that time, you know, the Loma love was pretty pretty heavy, even on Loma's side. Yeah. Remember what they did to Tia Fimo, and our next video is going to focus more on Tia Fimo. You know, remember what they did. Um, uh, where it was no rematch clause, they were so confident that T- their Tia Fimo was going to lose, and I re- and you know I had I uh, I don't I'm I'm never one to say I, I told you so, but I had some concerns, man. That size and that power, those body shots were lifting Lomachenko off of his feet. 
I, I, I had a gut feeling from the start that TFMO was going to win that fight and by body shots because that's how you win fights these days. Well, you've always won fights by body shots. Especially against a small fighter. Yeah, especially you know, a small fighter, you just cave his ribs in. If he can't breathe, he can't defend himself. He's yeah. fucked. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's that's probably what George is going to have to do is just belt the shit out of that kid's ribs. That's what I'll be doing. Well, my belt, closing, belt sh- yeah, my closing thoughts is, you know, George Lopez has nothing. I mean, um, yeah, George uh, Lopez, George Kimbosos has <laughs> nothing to lose. You know, um, he's got the I biggest know. payday of his career, probably the biggest payday he'll probably ever get. And one of the biggest paydays. In fact, let me, you know, really quickly. Do you remember what their purses were off the top of your head? Yeah, uh, TFMO got three point nine. George got two point one million US. So Crazy. Australian, that fight. What is that Australian? Let's work that out. Fucking, uh, have you got a thing to work that out? In Australian yeah, hold on. Um, let's see. One minute. Two point one. Two point one million US is probably fuck. What is that? Yeah, two point um seven. Two point seven in Australian. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that that is a that's a shit ton of cash. And uh, and that makes him one of the highest paid boxers of two thousand. I'm talking about guaranteed purse of two thousand and twenty one. Meaning, you know, he's up there. He's up there. He's in the top. I'm going to say definitely in the top ten. And he will probably well, remain he, there for the rest of the year. Oh look. For Australia, no one will get even close. I mean, Gallon's getting a million and a half for his fight against Spoonie, and he's the highest paid domestic fighter in the country. Yeah. So he he would easily be. I mean, Australians haven't made that sort of money. Uh, I think Horn Mundine would be the last fight that would be more than that. I think those two got four million each. That's just on reports. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that is a shit ton of but, but rightfully so. It's for. Five belts of lightweight. It's worth every bloody cent. But that's how much they should be getting. And yeah, for real, for real, for real. So um, <sighs> it's going to be a very, 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 very busy weekend. You know, but this card is priority for me. So you can rest assured and expect for me be, for me to be doing a full post-fight uh, recap immediately after the fight. And then if we have access to the post-fight press conference, we will be here. Uh, to wrap up, you know, really, really quickly, um, the undercard is, I can say it's a pretty, you know, stacked undercard. If you don't know, it's going to be featuring a, a former UFC champion, Vitor Belfort, in a uh, eight-round fight. For sure, it's Crew Frenchon, Cruz Desern, and Elaine Selderus are fighting undisputed at 168 for uh, the women's titles. You have uh, Andy Venice versus uh, John O'Carroll, who's returning. And then, of course, the uh, main event and all of the uh, musical acts that was played during the promo uh, that we showed earlier in the uh, video. And it's going to be a very busy day as a whole with uh, Jamal Charles defending his WBC title. Going to be covering that card. You have uh, Chavez Jr. versus Anderson the Spider Silver. Silva, Chavez Sr. versus uh, Camacho Jr., you have a uh, Jaime Munguia versus uh, Golovkin's last opponent, Camille uh, Zermetta. Uh, what else? God, you have uh, the return of Felix Stern for the hardcore degenerates. You know, and I'm and I'm out. Oh, you have the return of um, Naoya Inouye, 118 pound king, who's going to be taking on um, Michael Desmarenis. It's a very very busy day, I guess is what I'm saying to you. And then of course you have um, UFC with the Korean Zombie versus Dan Ige. So just letting you know, expect more videos from me and Big J throughout the week. And especially, basically, we're doing a video every day. And each day is going to be a different topic. So we talked about, you know, Tia Fimo, I mean, um, George Cambosos tomorrow. We're going to really, really dive in talking about the 135-pound division as a whole, ranking the fighters and how Tia Fimo Lopez, if he was to win, matches up against those fighters and his potential fight with Josh Taylor October the 2nd on top rank on ESPN pay-per-view. All right, turn it over to you, Big J. Closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. I hope George absolutely gets in there and smacks him out and pulls off the biggest upset since Horn Pacquiao. But, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. I really hope he gets there and smacks him out because, you know, Australia needs. We've never had a uh, born and bred undisputed champion. We've had undisputed champions that fight out of Australia, but we've never had a born and bred one. So Australian boxing needs this, like, big time, because at the moment, with, with the exception of George, not much going on. So, yeah, yeah and I'm really, I'm really still furious at the fact that the media has just not jumped on this shit. I mean, maybe they'll jump on it after 
going. Uh, who he finishes up tomorrow night? But who knows? But yeah. you know, fuck it. Go well, home. George gets in there and belts him one. Uh, well, we'll see. So um, remember, we're going to be here tomorrow, um, likely around the same time, hitting you with another video. Then, of course, we're going to be here for the final press conference, streaming that. And, of course, we're going to be here for um, um, the weigh-in and videos after each of those and then fight night recaps of definitely the main event. The other fights, depending on the scheduling of the other cards, may have to wait for following day coverage. I'm T Street Controversy. This is Big J with Fight View 360. Please take your time out and like the video, subscribe, and take a look at our website, fightview360.com, that is under major rebranding and rebuilding, and our rankings are updated in accordance with the sanctioning bodies. If you want to know who the champions are, who's ranked number one contenders, we have them right down below in the description box, fightview360.com. Please subscribe.